Yes, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. In the studio today, I have the beautiful Maureen Amoding, a female athlete in the Ugandan Basketball League. Momo, you're welcome to the show. Thank you for hosting me. You really look good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Momo, what inspired you to begin playing basketball? Uh, I think it's... Uh, what inspired me most was... Um, the very first time I saw people playing basketball, I think I fell in love with the game. And that was around my P7 vacation. Because I was generally a sports lady. The first the first sport I played was cricket. And then I played netball in school. I played some soccer. So I was more trying to evaluate what I really wanted to do. So when I saw people playing basketball, I started going to play basketball, my P7 vacation. But I didn't think I was so in love with it until I went to a school where they actually played a game. So that it became so easy for me to fall in love with a game. So I, I got so inspired. But mainly what inspired me was a team from Nabumali High. It had these girls that could play basketball. I found it so cool. And from then I stopped playing any other sports. I started playing basketball. So tell us briefly about your basketball history, like the club you've been to, high school. Yeah, I I I played um, in Bugwere High. It's a it's a school in the east. That's where my journey of basketball actually begins from. Yeah, we had Eastern competitions. We used to play against Nakumali High, Rock High, Majansi. Maj, Maj, yeah, Maja. yeah the Toro school. So like it was an Eastern competition. So that's where my journey of basketball actually starts from. But um, from where high, I went to Chivuli. I was scouted to Chivuli SS. While I was scouted to Chivuli SS, I remember Komgisha Gloria approaching me when we were at St. Leo Chegobe. Right. Trying to talk to me about A1, uh, it's, it's a girl team, you need to come and see how we play. So in my senior fall vacation, I got uh, time, I went to, they used to train in Kololo. I visited them and, and they let me in, but because I was young and the team was big, I didn't really, really get a spot immediately on the team. So that's when Harry, uh, the, the, the referee, the umpire, actually comes in and takes me to Ladybugs. Then and I played for Ladybugs. I grew so much because I was given a lot of playing time. And then in Chivuli, I had one of the best coaches, Eric Malinga. We won a championship in 2008. We had a really, 2007, uh, the high school championship, uh, Sprite. And I remember on that team, I played with Hat Makasi. It was really, it's really beautiful memories, really, going down the memories. Then uh, your club, what clubs you played for? I've played for, after Ladybugs, I joined KIU because I was, I wanted to get a scholarship for basketball. So I was contemplating between KIU and UCU, but unfortunately, UCU sports were full. So I went to KIU. So our first game was against UCU, UCU versus KIU. I had a very, very good game. I remember scoring about 30 points. And these people were like, no, we can't let go of this girl. So they improvised a, improvised a sport for me. So that's how I joined UCU. And yeah, so from UCU, I played for A1 Challenge. From A1 Challenge, I went to KCCA. And this season, I'm going to play for Renard Haga. That's good. Anyway, being a female athlete, uh, you with us in the studio tonight. I've had lots of male athletes here, so you're one of them. That means you're really special. Thank you. Yeah. What pushed you to become one of the best in Uganda? I think it's more of uh, of aspiring to be the best. It's, 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 it's something that comes within. If you have a talent, where do you want to get? Where do you want to be? And for me, I, I didn't want to be a mediocre at the game. I didn't want to be a moderate player. I didn't want to be on the bench. So I put in time. I put in extra work. I gave it my commitment, actually, 
whenever I could get time, I could go on court and work out. I played with the boys so much, to, not for me to be a CC on court, just for me to keep getting the strength that, you know what, I'll be banged, but I have to keep going. So it's more of a commitment thing, and it's passion that comes with, from within. That's what I believe. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is said that uh, you play for the national team, you don't deserve the number 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so did making the national team make you feel like I'd achieved something? Of course, of course, because trust me, as you get into the game, I think anyone who plays any sport, that's, that's a big achievement. You would want to represent your country and maybe go internationally and, and represent where you come from. It's, it's an achievement, definitely. It made me feel special. It's, I've taken so many great memories from it, and I believe it's one of the things I really aspired to do, to, 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 to become one of the players of the national team. Okay, talk about the girls' basketball league. Ah, the girls' basketball league. I think in the beginning, when I just joined the basketball league, the girls' basketball league, um, it was a bit obvious. You would know that uh, at the end of the day, it's um, maybe KCCA versus UCU. You get so, but now things have changed. Teams are more competitive. Uh, there is great investment. Actually, right now girls are paid good money. You can actually survive on basketball. Yeah, like uh, the, the 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 teams are more competitive. It's not too obvious to to guess that you know what, uh, KCCA and UCU will be in the finals. There is JKL. There is Dolphins on the on the. On, on the platform, there is a there is a A one challenge, although it's it's been shaky a bit, but they were, yeah, it's rebuilding, and uh, there are so many teams that are really competitive. Angels, you see how they play their basketball. It's 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 so amazing. The team, the league has really grown from what it used to be. Like you wouldn't go for any team thinking, ah, this is a walkover like it used to be. Now there's Every team is really struggling to see that they are somewhere, and it's a good thing. The team has really, the, the league has really grown. Okay, it is said girls' games are usually cutting races for the boys' games. Uh, yeah. In that fans rarely fill up the arenas when it's a girls' game. Mm -hmm. Why is that uh, so? I think it, it it's more also I would I would redirect that to 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 the to to us the female players as well. We need to advertise our own league. Like we need to have love for it. Besides, let me say the federation trying to put out the the fixtures. Uh, I think it would be nice if us the ladies ourselves went maybe on our social media platforms, invited the fans, uh, talked about uh, uh, what what we expect during the game. I think we need to build it on our own, so that as people see us building it, they come and join in. But there's not so much energy coming out from us, so it's so hard to to start telling someone, like, they, they, they are, there's a girls' basketball game, you need to show up. If, if, if it's not out there, then people may not know. I feel like it's more of a marketing issue. So, though I feel like if us, the girls, Put hands together and pushed for it. Trust me, it would it would go a long way. I want to give me your opinion now, in terms of basketball girls' development, because I know when you when you just entered the league, stars back then. I'm talking about like Mavita, Vicky. They were looking at you and they're like, oh my god, we have a star in that car. If you look at the national team now, we still have Flavio Kicho going strong. Uh, no disrespect to her, of course, she's vintage, but she's still going strong. W why is there no like development in the girls uh, compared to the boys? Uh, I personally, I wouldn't say there is no development really. Um, we can't take away the 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 great work some of these coaches are doing, by the way, to help the girls grow. Because if you see, you look at a team like UCU, they have a good coach who has helped them grow. Uh, a girl goes to UCU, doesn't know the basics, but maybe has the skill, a little skill, a little talent, and you see them growing. So I wouldn't say we don't have talent or we don't have players to replace the the players that are 
that are that are on the national team right now, like let's say the Flavius and and maybe Martha Soigi. But I, I would say it's more of also it comes down to personal effort and commitment. These are players maybe who are still very committed to the game and they are giving it 100% and their effort is seen. So definitely, they're not going to choose another player if they're still running the show and they're still giving the results. They wouldn't choose another player over them. So I, I, I think it's more of, it comes down to the commitment of these players, but also the gap I see right now is, the, is that high school, in high school back then, there used to be too much competition. I remember Chivuli against Nabisunsa when we used to be at Sprite tournaments. It would be a it would be a packed game. You wouldn't have where to sit to watch us play. So I feel like there used to be too much growth. And then also the coaches then they were really, really committed to developing students, the young players in high school compared to now like it's not it's not so much so there i remember any of nabisusa he had a couple of so many good players and they are all attached to to the good work he did so when you look at it right now people are still i'm not taking away uh the commitment other coaches have to the to the high school players but our commitment to the game as players then in high school it's you can't compare it to right now there are very few people who are committed in a team you could find one superstar running the show and yet then you would get five super players in high school who can who can dribble the ball who can score they didn't have to rely on momo to score you get so i feel like it's more of a growing process but there is that gap of high school producing good players to help join the league and play for the national basketball team. Okay, so basketball becomes so general compared to those days. Yeah. There are a lot of training camps uh, for everyone. Uh, there are very few female coaches in Uganda. What's your take on that? Because I know like maybe Mavita, Sharon, who coaches in the Kampala International School of mm -hmm. Uganda. So what's your take on there being very few female coaches? I feel like um, in the beginning, uh, like any other sport, uh the the ladies where we, we have always been i don't want to look down on ourselves and be like we we don't make certain things happen but i feel like africa culturally like ladies are not really really given priority this has just come out to uh and uh, for for women to be given priority to even uh be become coaches for management to look into these things, I feel it, it has it has been more of awareness. It's 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 a growing process, so I feel like it's a good start having a ladies coach on the national team, and uh, having some ladies who are engaging themselves in these coaching clinics. I feel like there is hope, and I feel like it's inspiration of looking at the head of the coach being a national uh, being a lady. Like it has inspired some of the other ladies to join in. So I feel like it's 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 a growing it's a growing situation that we really need to appreciate. But it's everything is really a process. It's a process, but I, I, I feel like people are really, really engaging themselves in, in, in two coaching clinics, especially the ladies and and there is growth. Cause then there was none. Now we have one. We shall go to two, three, four, five to ten. Yeah. So I'm going to guess a little bit. So no, recently, you had a very marvelous, splendid wedding. So my question is, how do you balance basketball, your work, like career-wise, and your family? Wow, that is tough. Uh, balancing work, um, balancing, it's a bit hard for anyone. It, it's it comes down to really, really having a spouse who is really understanding. Um, and I, I am grateful because he understands the game. He understands what time we are playing. He understands what time we are living. And it really, really comes down to, to understanding yourselves. And uh, he has played the game before. 
so he hasn't really restricted me so much in that area that in as much as i play in, a, in as much as i'm a mother and a wife at home i can still go out and have some fun with what i love to do so it comes down to really understanding and also balancing out your time you know practice is from six to like eight you you give it you commit your yourself to the two hours from morning to five you have work five to six it's a journey to practice over the weekend can you cut out all those other things and stay home with your family so i think it comes down to understanding each other but it also comes down to playing your roles when you have, you must play your roles as a mother and a wife okay so how would you describe yourself how would you describe yourself on the basketball court i think everyone who has seen me play really knows i'm a very competitive person I, I I really don't like losing. Like I, I want to go in there, give it all my my all, and give it my best. So I'm very very competitive. I'm so aggressive, and I'm so passionate about the game. So when when I'm on court, actually there are times my friends tell me, Maureen, you can't even smile with us when you're on court. I'm like, it's business. It's time for business. Why should I be smiling? It's supposed to be fun. I'm having fun, but I must first win. The fun will come later in af after I've won. So I feel like, okay, it stands in a way somehow because your teammates get that little friction about how you, you're reacting to certain things. Yeah, but I'm a passionate person. I'm very passionate about the game. I'm very aggressive and very competitive. That's how I describe myself in the court. Okay.
Okay, uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still here with Momo, the beautiful Momo, of course. <laughs> so, Momo, uh, UCU was pivotal to the development of basketball in your career. Yeah. I remember that game before they post you, mm. you dropped 50 points on them. <laughs> so, how did UCU improve your basketball? Um, UCU was a great deal to my basketball career. Because, uh, first of all... Um, they they gave me a basketball scholarship for my undergraduate so while on scholarship um you we had to ensure that we were committed to 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 our academics as sports athletes and also to 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 the game uh we had to to improve and uh, we had like benchmarks literally like there are certain things they expected of each player uh, in reference to your talent, of course, to how much potential you had. So the, the commitment, in as much as I would say they were kind of ties to the scholarship, they pushed me like it, 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 there was too much commitment to the game because if I didn't perform well with the, in the game, I would lose my scholarship, and I really needed both of them. Okay. So that also pushed me, inspired me so much to be a better player. And also, you see, you as a team, our discipline was so high. So it really, really developed me at all different dimensions of my life. Besides basketball, there was that discipline aspect that in as much as you are a basketballer, your discipline doesn't stop just on court. Yeah. Even off the court, you must stay disciplined for the sake of the university, for the sake of the sport, and also for the sake of your teammates. So we grew so much um, in those lines of discipline, in those lines of commitment to the team. We didn't miss practice, <laughs> not for any reason. Even if you're sick, you had to come and watch practice. So... For me, I feel like the commitment, the discipline you see you gave me, it didn't just stop with me at uh, sports, at basketball, but even in my careers, I go to work, uh, my family life, there are certain things I'm committed to and I don't compromise when it comes to them. So I feel like I grew so much as a person at UCU. I yeah. feel like my next question is going to be useless because you've really talked about lots of achievements. So that's the question. What do you think you have achieved from basketball? Um, from basketball, uh, first I'll talk about my basketball scholarships, though I've, I've already talked about them. But uh, my biggest achievements from basketball, um, I've got, I, I, I managed to do a master's degree in development studies still at um, at UCU, because after my undergraduate, they, they they, they gave me a master's scholarship. I think that has been one of my biggest achievements with basketball. And also, um, my, my leadership skills really, really improved as, as, as a role model to some of the young players as, and to some of the new players who were joining the team. Like, there are certain things I learned to do because I was I was I was a pioneer on the team. I was an elder on the team. So my leadership skills, my judgment skills, I feel like I really, really improved as a person in that area. And there are so many other things I've I've really achieved through basketball. basketball. I could take the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, it seems like you've achieved most of what you set out to achieve when you began playing basketball. And uh, you've won lots of things. You've won championships, MVPs, top scorers. What keeps you, what pushes you to keep playing up to today? Uh, what pushes me, I think it's the passion for the game, really. I, I still play even, actually, after giving birth, some people were like, are you still going to come back and play? I was like, oh, yeah. I'll come back and play. And when I talk to my, my doctor, and he's like, you can, you can actually play. I asked him after how long. He told me three months, but I went back after two months. <laughs> so I feel like uh, it's more of passion and the comp competitive, competitiveness in me that makes me, that pushes me, that drives me to, 
to feel like yes i've achieved but can't i achieve some more i still feel like there's something in me that i really feel like i i still can achieve some more if i still play basketball so, so i'm not about to quit so in simple terms you have the mamba mentality <laughs> yes <laughs> so i feel like quitting yeah definitely i feel like quitting um so many times um i think uh one of my most challenging years was when I came back to play after giving birth. You know, when everyone is still very concerned that you you're still from giving but you're from giving birth, you need to relax and to to relax on yourself. But you're working, you're working, you're pushing yourself. You want to get somewhere. You you still feel like I can still do this. So it was a little tough because at some point yes they were caring about my health and I knew that from the start but I felt like I still can do this you get so it was tough for me and I felt at some point I don't know but I felt like some people were not believing in me I felt like I I was in this alone I needed someone to just hold my hand and be like mom you know what you can do this you can push you can play you can still do this so i feel like um apart from a few few of my friends um the people that 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 i needed to hear it from were actually not telling me these things and at some point i felt like i felt like quitting so many times after after i was trying to come back to the game as like you 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 have a conversation with someone and they're like Maureen, I think you need to concentrate on your family. You, but I didn't give up. <laughs> yeah, even people who don't play the sports, like I could have conversations with them, and they're like, "You need to just, to just chill, concentrate on your family." There are there are lots. There's so much the world can offer you. You can put your mind elsewhere, and and you can grow in something else. But I felt like no. It's not what I want to do right now. I still feel like I need to get back in shape and I can still play. And yeah, it's been quite a journey, but I'm grateful that I am still playing. I am still following my dreams, and I'm not about to give up really. I'm not. That's a good one. So you've been around for quite some time. Uh, yeah. You've gone through a lot. What has been your worst basketball experience? Or experience? Uh, I think I'll, I'll I'll mention two crucial ones. Of course, I've lost some championships when I really feel like we I should have won. Um, but one of my worst experiences is when my I saw my sister literally break her leg in front of me. I I didn't know what to do. I just got close to her and just screamed. I, I didn't I could not believe it was happening to someone so close to me. And me and her really really have. A strong bond, and I remember her crying every single day in hospital, and that I think has been my worst basketball experience. I remember my mom calling me, and it's like, you see, I told you not to introduce her to basketball. Now see what you've done. Like it all came down on me, and I was like, oh my god, what what did I just do? And uh, her being a young player, at some point I really felt like maybe it could have been me, because she really really has too much potential and she was at the peak of her basketball career so but anyway uh, that aside um, I think also my worst experience was when we were, um, we were playing afro basketball in Cameroon and and we lost to Equatorial Guinea by one point <laughs> oh lord so we were we were so confident about this game we thought we would win but unfortunately, we lost the game. So I think that also registers as my worst basketball moment. Yeah, and back home, the the basketball games, there is a a, a championship we lost in UCU with three one against KCC. We had three, and they had one, and we lost. Best of seven. Best of seven. It was a final, and we lost the championship. So. I remember not sleeping for like a week. I I felt like I shouldn't even play basketball, quitting and yeah. But 
you 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 wake up to a brighter day you wake up to a brighter season and you work hard so yeah those i think are my worst many of best basketball memories my best basketball memories i think the team uh, was with the team that went to cameroon because like any other basketball player we we all set targets we all have, know what we, where we want to go and where we want to reach in our careers and for me getting to afro basketball is one of my best achievements i feel like wow we're playing at um a high level we're playing with some of the international players some of the best basketballers in the world like nigeria imported literally 12 of their players from the US and they really had great skill. So playing at Afro Championship was um, surely, it has been one of my greatest achievements. And um, I think also winning as MVP of the league in 2010 was, was such an achievement. I didn't expect it. We had so many great players on the team. We all contributed differently and being a young player who, who is just starting to play at the peak of their basketball career in UCU, I didn't really expect to be MVP. So, yeah, it came as a surprise and I think it's also one of my greatest achievements. Being a successful woman like you are and uh, at the sport, I'm sure you definitely have that role model internationally who pushed you to become the person you are today. Who yeah. do you think that is? I think it's Serena Williams. Yeah. I, I, her energy, she just does not give up. And until this day, I follow her stories. And she's really, really inspirational. Even when everyone thinks she can't get one more grant, she still feels she can. So I feel like she is she is really my super role model okay. yeah so i'm going to talk about uh, wnba that's uh, international basketball in the yeah. states do you have a starting all-time starting five yeah i i wouldn't say i watch so many of their basketball games but of course i i, I know of some really really great players i've seen play okay. so for me i'll go with diana terrace uh britney griner i'll go with candice parker I'll go with Mayamo. So bad, of course. Then uh, your role model locally. Um, that one is a bit tricky, but um, I'll go with Stephen Omon, my super galactical. <laughs> no, because he's really, really exceptional. Looking at um. Uh, at at his age, no 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 disrespect, of course, his age and and what he does on court. By that age, so many people have given up. At that age, so many people are concentrating on other things. But uh, Stephen Omoni has really really given the game his heart, and every time he steps on the court, he gives us a hundred percent. It's working out, not working out. You still see the effort. You still see the energy. You still see the commitment, the passion. Yeah. I really think, for me, he's my super role model locally. Uh, that's nice. Say that starting five locally, all time. All time, I'll go with retired players. Um, first of all, I'll go with Liz Bazira. I really miss that girl. I've played with her in Iwana. I've played with her in the national team. Her energy, her zeal. Oh my God, she is she is a superwoman. <laughs> she needs to come back and play. Uh, I'll go with Liz Bazira. I'll go with Akelo Florence. Yeah. I watched a little bit of her games, but I, I, I think she's, she was really, really bad. Um, I'll go with Mariam Birunji. Okay. She's, she's a superstar. Some may not, may not know it, but I watched her play in those days of Ladybugs and Sparks, I think. She was really, really good. I'll go with uh, Linda Tamale at number, at number two. And number one, I'll go with Debbie. Uh, Carol. 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 Carol, she used to play for KCCA. Ah, okay. 
baby Carol. She she's a good point that. Then the next question is who has been your toughest opponent on the basketball court? Uh my toughest um first uh okay I'll go locally because I've played so many games at home and I think my toughest opponent has really been Sima. I had to go literally under five screens for me to get the ball, to shoot the ball. So I got to the coaches. They were really, really, you know, they knew that every time we were going to play KCCA, it was going to be hard for me. So I've really faced most of the best defensive players in the league because everyone knows um, my my offensive strength. So they're like, Maureen comes, you let her... Let her give her two seconds, she'll shoot the ball. So I've, I've faced toughest opponents. But I think Sima for me, Sima has, has, has taught me so many techniques of how to play against a tough opponent. And it, it has been easy, by the way, with others who are not her. Because if I face her and I, I make my moves around and get to score, then it's easier with other people because she's one of the best defensive player, players Uganda has developed, really. Okay, so uh, when you're still in A1 uh, in the playoffs, I think that was the semi finals, news like in the sports section of the newspaper was Mori drops 40 something points on was it KCC? Yes, yeah. yes uh, what is your go to move on the basketball court? I mean, like your best move to beat an opponent easily. I think if, if it's if it's a one on one, I, I usually go with the in and out. The in and out and then if it's um if 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 the defense collapse, I usually dish out the ball or if I see uh two people collapsing and there's another open at the other side I go with the Euro step. Oh my god. <laughs> Did you just hear that? <laughs> anyway, uh Growing up in a third world country, of yeah. course, Uganda is third world. Yeah. Our parents are always like motivate us to read hard so that you can get that job. I know you faced a lot of difficulties when trying to play basketball, getting yourself yeah. involved in basketball. What was your parents' uh, influence on basketball? Did they motivate you or demotivate you? Of course, in the beginning, it was super demotivation. <laughs> Uh, I, growing up in, of course, a humble, coming from a humble background, a very traditional home, they felt basketball was more of a guy sport. So every time I could tell my mom, I'm going to play basketball, I remember her telling me, you're supposed to be a boy, you're not supposed to be a girl, those things are for boys, they're so masculine. And I'm like, mommy, the, the world is changing. This is a sport for both girls and boys. I can play it. So she's like, okay, make sure you're home by six. So I go and play till like seven. I come back home, a, a chaos. So it wasn't really, really positive from the start. But I think when parents start seeing the good in, 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 in the game, like especially getting a scholarship, my mom started being very proud of me, seeing me on TV. She would be like, oh my God, my daughter is always on TV doing basketball interviews, seeing me in the papers. She's like, this is my daughter. She would go to church. I remember testifying all the time. And I think even the congregation would get bored about it. So I feel like it's more of... Um, it's more of show, showing results also to inspire our parents to understand that it's a sport that can be embraced and it's a sport that can give anyone opportunities to go very far with, with their lives, yeah? Because after I got, a, I got the scholarships and she wasn't paying tuition in, in, a, good, in a good university like you see, it was... It was excitement. It was a, it was an achievement on her side as well. So I feel like yeah, it 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 it's never positive in the in the start, but eventually, yeah, it gets better. What's your idea about uh, training camps in uh, Uganda? I feel like they are good. Uh, the ideas are really really good. Uh, the sustainability, and and um, the long term sustainability of, of maintaining the programs is a bit tricky because along the way you need funds, you need all those things. But I believe um, 
the ideas are really really good and it it has impacted on some young players especially like i hopes you can see kids excited about i hopes they learn they learn certain things they 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 take with them certain things so i feel like the the, the idea of camps is good and it has impacted on the game in some way but like i believe in the process and i believe in growth since they have just started up, let's give them a benefit of the doubt. Let's let's support them. Let's market for them. Let us let's spread the word, and um, let's not stick to just one. What about we? They come together and and make a bigger something. So I, I feel like it's really a good idea. How it's sustained could be a problem. How they are implemented could be a problem. But again. Let's look at the brighter side of it and let's support them with the brighter side and forget about the negative side. Okay, uh, I know you're a Kobe Bryant fan and uh, in one of those documentaries uh, when they're talking about Kobe, they talk about him motivating the little ones so much. Uh, I don't know if you know Kyle Kova, he's a basketball player in the NBA. The first time he was in the basketball court and played against Kobe, Kobe told him good game and he was so excited Kobe had told him good game. Being the perfect role model that you are, I know like people want to be like you. So, what is your secret to becoming who you are? How would you advise people out there to become like you? Um, first of all, I would I want to talk about commitment. Um, to benefit from anything, to yield fruit from anything, you have to really be super committed to something. There's no shortcut shortcuts about that one. Commitment and hard work, and time. If you give basketball your time, you will yield. If you don't give it time, you won't yield. It's as simple as that. It's like uh, work. If you want to, 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 to gain, if you want to get a salary, you must show up at work. Yeah? You must be committed to it. You must, be, you must be super principled about it. So for me, I feel like uh, for anyone to grow at the game, for anyone to be as I am or as I was, <laughs> you really have to commit yourself to the game. And sometimes you won't get the props that you expect from people. Yeah, like you won't, you won't hear what people, what you, what you expect people to tell you. But you have to push yourself. You have to know what you want. You have to know your goals as a person. Okay, this has failed to work out. What's next? Like. You have to keep moving. Life has to go on because it's not going to be a, a, a smooth road, but the bumps should inspire you to be a better player, to be a better person. And also, your being a better person shouldn't stop at just being basketball. Your commitment to things shouldn't stop at being just being a basketball player. But even at different dimensions of your life, you, you ought to... To be committed. Yeah. So, last question. We are living in a very dangerous time, like this era, the era of the pandemic disease, that's uh, COVID-19, Corona. And uh, recently, the government tried using celebrities. We had so bad black going out of our way and telling the public about Corona. So, I want you to look into the camera and advise the public about Corona. Uh, my advice would be that. First of all, Corona is real. It's there. It might not be your friend, your neighbor, your mother, your father, or brother who has got it or, or someone so close to you, but it's real and it's there. Let's take precautions. Let's wear our masks when we are out there. Let's wash our hands. Let's keep safe. If you don't really have to go out, stay home and stay safe. Just bring all the fun at home. That's what I would say. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that has been Maureen Amodin, one of Uganda's finest. Momo, thank you for coming. You're welcome, Mimi. I hope Thanks next me. I hope next time when we ask you to come and join us, you'll be part of the show. Definitely, definitely. I would. Okay, that's Momo. I will see you again on Wednesday. Have a good night. Thank you.